Hello there, guys and gals. On today's episode, y'all are actually going to help me. Not mentally, that's a lost cause. On how to fit some drag radials in this 69 Dart. I may or may not have the correct axle. So today, I'm going to go over three options in order to shove that tire into this wheel well. And y'all are gonna help me choose which one because they range in difficulty level and expenditure. And for you crew cab owners or 67, 69 dart owners, you know how small these wheel wells are and how they don't take a very big tire. Unfortunately, to add to that problem, that's a seven and a quarter rear axle. And the only eight and three quarter axle I have is for a B body. Like I said, the eight three quarter axle I have is from a B-body. And it measures 55 inches outside flange to outside flange. Really not sure what year range that puts it in. I looked at a couple charts online and one said this, the other said that. I don't know. But this one measures 55 inches. Which I'm pretty sure A-bodies are 52. 52 and a half, so we're looking around three inches wider. Which might be a problem for that dart. Well, like I said, I can only think of three ways to fit a tire like that and a car like this, an axle like that. And some of them will take a lot of work, some will take a little bit of work. But really, I guess it just boils down to what do you want it to look like? I mean, it's a four door dart. Who cares what a four-door dart looks like? So let's talk about these three options. Option one, the stink bug. Now this method is taking a page out of Jeremy from Bad Tree Productions book and giving it the old stink bug look. You know, jacking up the rear real high and shoving those slicks inside those fenders. But they might not fit if this thing squats. Now Jeremy has managed to make his crew cap dart hook on these size tires. So this method could work. Now there's two ways I could do this method. Both ways require some severely arced springs. I can either get some custom springs made or get a set of super sock springs. And then I'm gonna have to run a gnarly shackle. Now as far as my axle's concerned, I've got two options. I can A, leave the axle the way it is now, build it as a B-body axle, and then run some heavy offset rims, tuck those tires in. Unfortunately, though, you're really not going to get that big tire look. You know, because it's going to look like you have front rims on the back and the whole crazy offset thing. I don't know how I feel about that yet. Option two is do what the Dodge Whisperer said and go get that axle narrowed to A-body specs. Which is going to cost a nice chunk of change. But I'd be able to run a normal sized rim and pull off that stink bug look like Jeremy from Bad Tree Productions. Option two, the wannabe Hemi Superstock. Now this option, I'm going to assume is the cheapest of all the options. Because I would run standard B-body axle, possibly some very large 15 by 10 rims, a big slick, and they would stick out the side. Of course, as you nostalgic Mopar fans know, in order to be a Hemi Superstock, We've got to cut those fenders. A lot. And unfortunately, we've got a door in the way. Hopefully, we don't have to take off too much in the front. But in order to have a tire stick out this far and not have a crazy amount of shackle and lift spring in the rear, I would have to cut that fender. A lot. Now, these aren't necessarily the tires I would run because it really depends what I can fit with the setup I choose. This is just more of an example of what it could look like. I say this is the cheapest option, mainly because all it requires is for me to build a standard B-body axle to B-body length, cut the living crap out of these fenders, and then just start shoving tires in there until I find one that I like. And it kind of looks cool. Well, if you're into that 70s dragster look. I'm pretty sure Johnny Cash would approve of it. And the final option, option three, I'd like to call, I want to be just like Mike and his GTS. You know, from my car shop. 
if you've ever watched my car shop, you know he's got a rockin' GTS. And it's got most likely double the width tire than this one in the back of his car. I consider this option the most expensive, time consuming, and possibly out of my mechanical aptitude, but maybe willing to try because it involves many tubbing this car out. Now Mike from my car shop, he did a little bit more than a mini tub, so we're not gonna go too far into that. Y'all go check out his channel if y'all wanna find out how tubbed out that GTS is. But in order to fit a real fat tire inside these wheel wells, step one, I would relocate these springs. Y'all know what I'm talking about. Taking the spring from the outside of the frame to right underneath. So we'd have to inboard those springs. Step two, start cutting all this inner fender. You know, to get it out so we can push it back. Because the edge of that fender now got to be at the edge of that frame. By doing that, not only am I relocating the spring perches on this axle, I can severely cut down the axle I'm using. Because let's be honest, no one uses a seven and a quarter. No one. That's why I think this is the most coolest of the three options. Unfortunately, it's also the most expensive, time consuming, labor intensive, possibly out of the realm of my uh, mechanical aptitude. Not sure if I would finish this before No Name Nationals, but dang, it would be cool. Real cool. So now you've heard all three options, which one do y'all like best? What's the pros and cons of everything? Do we vintage super stock it, run some really wide rims, cut these fenders up, and let it all hang out? Do we go for the stink bug look like Jeremy from Bad Tree Production? Jack up this rear, obviously without a floor jack, but with springs and shackles. Get all the clearance we need. Or lastly, do we go full my car shop and tub out the whole rear of this car and shove the biggest tire we can? And obviously, cut down that eight and three quarter because no one runs a seven and a quarter. Well, there you have it, guys and gals. Let me know in the comment section down below. Do I cut this axle down? Do I build it the way it is? Do I stick these tires way out from these fenders? Do I cut the fenders? Let me know in the comment section down below on what you think I should do with this car. Because it's a four door. No one seems to care about these four doors. Though I do know some that are very opposed to the uh, super stock cut of fenders and others that think a B body axle does not belong in an A body. Heck, there's even some of y'all that think I should just run the, uh, the stock wheels and tires on this thing. Yeah, I'm gonna need some bigger meats to beat Jeremy. Regardless on what I decide to do, this car is gonna need new springs, a new axle, and a set of wheels and tires. We just gotta figure out how we wanna install them. I don't know, I am kinda digging that tire sticking out so far. But should I hack the fenders? It is just a four door. See y'all next time.